It's Friday, February 1, the end of the work week and the start of a new month. We have lots to tell you today. Notwithstanding the ruling of the December 21 vote by the Acting Chief Justice Roxon George in the High Court on Thursday, the administration still stands. This is according to Minister of Public Security Kemraj Ramjatan and Minister of Communities Ronald Bulkan. More in this report. During an appearance on the National Communication Network's televised context program, both ministers said that it is not the end of the road and that the decision handed down by the acting chief justice was the first step in a three-stage legal process. You have every right to access right up to the final court, namely the chief, the CCJ, before we can now both parties settle on this thing. On the first round, we don't know who win the fight yet. We are saying that although it is her judgment on this matter that says that a threshold was not arrived at, we are of the opinion now that since you have a higher court that can reverse her, okay, we go to that court. Meanwhile, Minister Bulkan refuted the narrative being peddled, especially by the political opposition, that the administration was defeated by a vote of no confidence. My understanding is, well, that the court is, as we heard from Kemraj a moment ago, that the court is hierarchical. So what we've had today is the first rung, or the first phase, if you will, of a three-stage process. No doubt, the decision that has been given by the uh, Honorable Chief Justice, uh, sitting in the capacity of the High Court, is the first stage. Uh, my understanding is that uh, the, next state, the next steps would be an appeal to the Court of Appeal and then a final appellate jurisdiction, which is the CCJ. So I am clear in my mind as to the constitutionality of the government. The government will be asking for expeditiousness in the hearing of this case at the level of the appeal court. Reporting for InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. An integrated regional tax office of the Guyana Revenue Authority in Bartica has been relocated to a new and more conducive location. The new office will provide residents with a number of services, including the processing of licenses, taxes, and other related services. Delicia Haynes has the details. Commissioning the new facility was Minister of Finance Winston Jordan, who said the establishment and relocation of the IRTO is a major achievement for the Bartica municipality. The minister added that it is also testament of the government's commitment to improving the quality of taxpayers' services throughout Guyana. I'm convinced that this edifice will provide both a conducive and convivial atmosphere for staff and the public to conduct their business. I'm of the view that it will also serve as a catalyst for taxpayers to be compliant and for the staff to offer the highest quality of consumer services to everyone who visits. GRA's Commissioner General Godfrey Stacia told the gathering that there is much to be expected with the establishment of this service delivery mechanism in the town. He gave foresight as to what can be expected over the next couple of years with regards to the integration of GRA services countrywide. The best is yet to come. We have only moved there for the last couple of weeks and within the next few months the type of services that would be available to, the, to you, the citizens of Bartica, would be second to none. It will be available here as it is available in Georgetown. Over the next couple of years, every, every uh, branch that we open will have the same service. We would, whether you are from, from Letham or, or you are from Bartica or from Anna 
Regina or you're from Georgetown, any office that you visit, you would be able to get any service that is available. You don't have to go anywhere. The regional chairman, Gordon Bradford, and Bartica's mayor, Gifford Marshall, also noted their satisfaction with the official commissioning and operationalization of the IRTO. Mayor Marshall noted that central government means business as he reflected on the continuous development that Bartica continues to accommodate. For Info Hub, Delicia Haynes. In Agri News, Minister of Finance Winston Jordan said the economic prospects are good for farmers in Mocha on the east bank of Demerara who are part of the Rural Agricultural Infrastructure Development Program. Details from Alexis Rodney. Continuing on a series of visits to communities financed by the Rural Infrastructural Development Program, Minister Jordan today visited the East Bank the Marara village of Mocker to deliver some plans and see the advancement made on the project. I'm very pleased with the progress made so far and um, I'm very pleased to have met a number of the farmers and a number of the villagers. Um, we are going to see to what extent um, challenges that they continue to have. We are going to see to what extent in this budget we can uh, assist them. The RAID program is a $318.6 million carbon development fund project aimed at fostering growth in the agricultural sector. Minister Jordan said that the government wants to see the project replicated. I like some of the ideas that are coming out. They're thinking forward about um, preservation of fruit, um, putting up a uh, processing plant and so on. So those are good uh, ideas that we can uh, work with. Overall, though, I'm quite happy with what I've seen here, and I'm in choose that the farmers themselves can see a living, a sustainable living out of our agriculture. The Agricultural Sector Development Unit has distributed some 1,200 coconut seedling and 2,402 citrus plants to over 24 farmers. A weekly delivery schedule is maintained and will conclude by the end of March. Communities such as Maka, Buxton, Triumph and Ithaca have been identified for urgent intervention as residents over the last 30 years have been experiencing extreme flooding of farmlands due to poor drainage systems. Reporting for InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu was in Region 2 Pomeroon, Supernam, where he conducted a site visit in a location where Radio Esequibo will be established. The Prime Minister said the National Communications Network's technical team is ready to begin work on the station with expected completion by mid-2019. He also assured Region 2 residents of the government's continued support. More on this story will be provided on our social media platforms and also on our website. Still to come, establishment of a mining school on the cards and Harmony Week begins. This and more when we return. Stay with us. The future of Guyana has never looked better. Our nation is on the cusp of a development program like never seen before. While Guyana is now emerging as an energy giant through the discovery of massive reserves of oil and natural gas, it is your government's intention that the huge benefits emerging from this will go where it matters most, to you, the people of this beloved country. There is a surge of confidence in the way Guyana is governed once again, and the level of investor interest is unprecedented. Guyana is poised to become the breadbasket of the region, and the pace at which this nation will grow through prudent fiscal management will be nothing short of impressive. But more than anything else will be the way every Guyanese, regardless of color, class, or creed, becomes a part of this historic period of national transformation, sharing in the wealth and well-being of it all as one Guyana. Welcome back. In more good news for the economy, Supreme Ventures Jamaica Limited officially opened its doors on Thursday evening under the brand iBet Supreme, providing more gaming options to the public. Here is that report. In his address at the launch, Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich commended the company's decision to establish a business venture which will boost the economic livelihood of Guyanese. Guyana, I think, is very pleased to welcome an enterprise operating in the service arena um, and which enterprise can bring economic activities here that will enhance the uh, standard of living, the quality of life, of Guyana. I think one is especially interested in the employment dimension. 
GoInvest CEO Owen Verwin noted that the opening business venture bodes well for the economic outlook of the country. I bet Supreme uh, has made a very significant investment in the Guyana economy. I think it's great to know from a Guyana perspective that our sisters and brothers in the Caribbean, especially as far as Jamaica, further up from Trinidad, have looked at the outlook on Guyana from a detailed feasibility study on a service sector operation in Guyana. And I will say that the outlook for Guyana is good. Chairman of the Board of Supreme Ventures Enterprise, Walter Scott, said that decision to invest in Guyana's economy is one which could not be achieved without the support and diligence from staff, a first of many moving forward to establish new markets in the country. The Supreme Ventures Guyana Board is committed, dedicated, and very pleased to be part of this new journey in Guyana. The Supreme Ventures Group is known throughout its home territory and will be known in Guyana because of its commitment to good corporate governance and transparency. What is great about the establishment of IBET Supreme is that the individuals and communities in Guyana will see an improvement in their social welfare as a result of the company's commitment the company has introduced simulcast racing from the Kamanas Park in Jamaica, as well as the American racing to the Guyanese market. It will shortly be followed by racing from the British racetracks and pool betting with the inclusion of sports betting catered for this year. Neil Odeman, InfoHub. By the end of 2019, the mining town of Linden should have its own branch of a mining school. This mandate has been given by Minister of Natural Resources Raphael Trotman as he delivered the feature address at the launching of the Mineral Prospect and Map Reading Level 1 course at the Linden Technical Institute. Here's more. I am mandating the chairman of the mining school and the director of the mining school to ensure that there is a branch of the mining school established in Linden before the end, <laughs> before the end of... 2019. Minister Trotman says the school will not replace the Linden Technical Institute, but rather work alongside it to ensure youths gain the required knowledge to further develop Ghana's mining sector. That branch is not to replace, Madam Principal, the Technical Institute, but to come alongside it to offer courses that will strengthen you, and you on the other hand may offer some courses to the mining school to strengthen it. So this is going to be a partnership. I believe that the space is available, Ms. Betchen, you're right. The facilities are there, the uh, resources are certainly... Approximately 120 young people were interviewed for the Mineral Prospects and Map Reading Level 1 course. However, only 75 could be accepted for the first batch. Minister Trotman told the young people gathered that government was here to serve them. The government of Ghana is not doing you a favor. Don't believe that... I'm here to tell you or any member of parliament or any regional chairman or mayor that we are doing you a favor. It is our duty as a government to prepare you for tomorrow. In fact, when we don't do so, we are failing in our duty. So <clears throat> it is not that you are here because you are chosen few and you are going to go on to greater heights and we expect certain things of you. Yes, we expect certain things of you, but as I said, we are here to serve you, to take care of you, to build you into that man and woman that you want to be so that you can take your rightful place in our society. The course is expected to run from January 31st to February 22nd, 2019. It will cover topics on operational safety and health, mining and environmental regulations, applying for exploration and mining permits, mineralization and topographic map interpretations, use of navigation instruments and basic mineral prospecting. The course has two levels of certification. Reporting for InfoHub, Felicia Valenzuela. In our final report, we tell you that Minister George Norton has indicated that the Social Cohesion Department is preparing to host Guyana's first ever Social Cohesion Religious Conference. This was highlighted as the country observes World Interfaith Harmony Week 2019. Delicia Haynes joins us with that story. 
The hosting of the event comes even as the government continues to seek ways to foster social cohesion and achieve sustainable development goal number 16, which speaks to the promotion of a peaceful and inclusive society. All Guyanese need to actively participate in the process of achieving social cohesion. First within our parameters and then on a global level. This administration is fully cognizant of the fact that inclusion, respect for diversity, and peaceful dialogue are essential for the survival of humanity. These remarks were made as government ministers and members of the diplomatic corps gathered to officially launch World Interfaith Harmony Week 2019. This year's theme is Love of the Good and Love of the Neighbor. United Nations Resident Coordinator Mikiko Tanaka explained that religious harmony must transcend belief and extend love to every person. The core of all the faith systems and traditions is the recognition that we are all in this together and that we need to love and support one another to live in harmony and peace in the world. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres says, wherever we live, whatever our circumstances or place in society, our race, color, gender, or sexual orientation, language, religion, opinion, nationality, or economic status, we are all equal in human rights and in dignity. Religious bodies represented at the launch of Harmony Week include indigenous groups, Hindus, Faithists, Rastafarians, Muslims, Baha'i, and Christians. Harmony Week will run from February 1 to 7, 2019, with a series of activities which will be hosted. For InfoHub, Delicia Haynes. Before we leave, let's remind you that the Junior Calypso and Soca competition will be on this Saturday, and Calypso fans can get a taste of what's to come as the adults host their rehearsals at the Kitty Seawall Bandstand on Sunday. So get in on the fun for March 2019 and at the same time support local talent. That's all for this evening. Connect with us on WhatsApp, like and subscribe to our Facebook page for notifications. You can follow us on Instagram for updates and visit our website at dpi.gov.gy. Your bridge and weather reports are up next. Mm -hmm.